Hey everybody, it's Mark, the Family Woodworker. Hey, there's nothing quite like kicking off the new year with a simple little project, especially when it solves a household problem. These are our current salt and pepper shakers, where the head on the pepper shaker is dented pretty badly, and the salt literally pours out of the shaker. But sometimes easy, simple wood projects are the most satisfying. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool to use a white hardwood for the salt shaker, and some sort of a black or brown wood for the pepper shaker? I already had this piece of holly and wenge in stock, but the cost? <coughs> Another, less expensive option would be a couple linear feet of maple and some dark stain. I'm going to start by cutting out some 2 inch by 6 inch pieces from each of the wood varieties, so that when stacked up, I'll have a blank a little thicker than 2 inches to start with. The wenge was a little thicker than 3 quarters of an inch, but we'll trim that down as well. Though the boards I bought were pretty flat, they still needed to be planed or sanded for glue up. I just used the belt sander to solve that problem where the surfaces were now in pretty good shape. During my build, Matt had created the simple barnwood wall hanger that my wife had ordered for our guest bedroom, and that looks pretty cool. So now we add copious amounts of glue on each set of three pieces in order to get a good bond, and we'll get them clamped up to sit overnight. Late that afternoon, it was a nice breaking point, I spotted an unexpected visitor on the river. At first, I thought it was a duck, but the reddish-brown head and the red bill said otherwise. It found the only open water on the whole river as I searched for matching pictures of what the bird could be. The closest match was to something called a common merganser, but leave me a comment if you actually know what this bird was. The next day, it was unclamping and trimming on the table saw to get my blocks down to that 2 inch by 2 inch dimension. A little trimming was all that I really needed to get the blanks ready for the lathe. I'll start with the holly, getting it locked into the headstock, but if you don't have a wood lathe, you can also do this project based on that squared up block of wood. The first cuts are the messiest, taking off the hard edges from the block, and my goal was to get each finished piece down to 2 inches in diameter or a little less than two inches. I'll stop every now and then and check my progress with the calipers to make sure that my chisel cuts were even across the length. When it was close, I rough sanded the cylinder to prep it for the next step. I prepped the dark wenge wood the same way, turning down the hard edges of the block and smoothing out the cylinder. The wenge needed a little more work to get it down to two inches. Working with the lathe, for me, is truly a therapeutic process. It takes your focused attention and patience as you will the block into the form you desire. It was here that I added a simple design element on each shaker, using a pencil to mark the cuts, and measured out the final length to four inches, placing two curves near the top of each shaker. A little rough sanding later, it was time to bore out the center holes. I used a 1 inch Forstner bit to start the drill process, though I could see that with only one anchor point on the headstock, the cylinder was a little unstable. I cut off the holly blank and we'll finish the drilling on the drill press later. The grooves look pretty cool on the top. The same process was used on the wenge pre-drilling the core and cutting off the blank for more work off the lathe. By using two of these wide wood block clamps set 90 degrees in relation to each other, they will hold this blank perfectly vertical for the drill bit. The Forstner bit was moved to the press and the bore hole was finished to a measured 3 and 7 8 inches in depth, leaving 1 8 of an inch of thickness at the top of the shaker. I also chose to coat the inside of each shaker with a thin epoxy to seal the inner wood grain and hopefully avoiding the possibility of salt or pepper getting stuck inside. I also set up a makeshift jig to hold the shaker on the grinding wheel in order to carve out a small bevel on the lip of each shaker. Just one more little design element that I thought looked cool. With most of the woodwork complete, there was just one more step needed to allow room for the silicone plug on the bottom of each shaker. I used a 1 and 3 8 inch Forstner bit to carve out a little wider hole, but a shallow hole just to hide the plug. There are a number of finishes you can choose to use, but satin poly was my choice to seal the exterior wood. 
Finally, I used the smallest drill bit I own in order to place three centered holes on each shaker top. For the plugs, I found these 1 inch or 25 millimeter silicone plugs, which is just going to be perfect for my shakers. They fit snugly on the bottom of each shaker. Now, the pepper comes out a little at a time, and the salt won't explode over my mashed potatoes anymore. You know, small victories, we'll take them when we can get them. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, if you don't have a lathe, I think a well-cut and sanded square design would look pretty cool. Or you could just set up your table saw blade at 45 degrees to produce an octagon design as well. Free plans for this project listed in the video description or out on my regular website under the Free Stuff tab. I think these shakers look great on the dining table or even just floating around the stove. I truly hope you give this project a try. Just stay safe when using these power tools. I also hope you liked the video and consider subscribing to our little channel. Take care, everybody.